All right, folks, so I'm deviating here a little bit. I had to come back to page for something on my way back home. So what I wanted to do um, while I was going through here was to um, stop at the Grand Canyon and actually take a couple of pictures at least. So I drove by it on the way from page to Kanab. You can take the uh, 89A, I, first time I tried it, and I, all the times I've been through here, I never actually took it um, for various reasons, but I went ahead and bit the bullet and, and decided to take it once. And I um, took a few shots on the way through. It's actually a two hour, it's much longer than going um, out 89 directly from Page to Canab. It's like twice as long. And that's not even including going um, to the North Rim, which is another hour from 89A, once you get into the forest, down to the rim and then back. Uh, it's going to add, that's going to be like a day trip to do that. But I wanted to solve some problems I was having, taking shots with uh, my various DSLRs before I um, uh, went down there. Uh, so I took uh, some more samples around Kanab and around um, Page and went out to Bryce and to Zion uh, National Park and took some other samples and I just ran into this big problem I was having with my DLSR shots. They were all coming out looking really not good compared to the um, success shots and I tried to find out why and I eventually did find out why. It just took me a couple of days of really digging to figure out what it was but made me reach back into the halcyon days of my uh, f landscape photography uh, life and sort it out. And basically, I'm gonna give you a short run. I just wanna do this really quickly here before I leave. Um, what it really comes down to is uh, HDR. Um, now I know I said that before the 6A had H HP uh, HDR plus, and it makes a big difference when shooting um, golf shots, but it also makes a, a big difference when shooting landscape shots where you have a lot of sky in the shot. And um, especially on bright days, and it's very, very bright out here in Arizona, northern Arizona, Utah. And it does help quite a bit. I did find out that the 300, the D300, does not actually support blending it does support bracketing but it doesn't support blending and this is where the problem with this camera comes in this is where i started noticing a lot of the shots that i took that were you know big wide um, landscape shots were coming out underexposed in evaluative meter metering or um, matrix metering and that's because it's the bright ass blue sky is pushing down the rest of the shot and it's like two almost three stops underexposed. So going to center weighted metering, that allows you to get the rough center of the metering correct and it gets you at least slightly higher exposure in wide landscape shots, but it doesn't quite get you there. To really get this right, you have to use bracketing. And so what I found out was looking into this, I've been looking into it for a while for, for golf, but I really had to focus on it now, is the 6.8 does all this stuff for you, but it still makes some mistakes. It's just a rough blend. Um, it tends to blow out stuff. It tends to flatten the tone curve and the, um, the image is, you know, almost no saturation in it if it's a wide angle uh, landscape shot, but if it's, if it's, um, with a large dynamic range, but if it's a narrow landscape shot where at least you're filling the, the frame with uh, foreground data, it does a good job. So it gets things pretty well, pretty well done. Where it runs into trouble is when there's a lot of sky and the foreground is dark, darker, let's say, and then it tends to just blow out the, the foreground and give you a, um, a decent sky and I'm guessing it uses some kind of haze filter, which um, uh, uh, was Raw Therapy Sports has a haze uh, filter in it. GIMP does not. It has this weird um, highlight and shadow uh, tool that you can use, but 
it's it's not bad, but it does tend to put halos around the highlights um, in the sky, which means you can only use it so much. So ultimately what I had to do was go back to finding some kind of gamma adjustment, but that actually uh, does work. I don't quite have the bright blue skies down correctly, but I do have at least a, a reasonable result. But the 850 works a lot better than the 300. You just set it up for HDR blending and um, it'll do it continuously. There's an option for continuous or single shot and the 750 is very similar to the 850. Uh, the 610 I think is still taking three shot brackets but the 810, uh, 850 and 750 are using electronic shutter brackets. So it just open the main shutter and then take you know the last shot and close shutter. Does it real fast, real nice, blends decently, but what you do have to do is tweak the fine um, adjustment, EV adjustment for the um, the HDR spacing to get the overall color blend the way you want. Because if it's too small and everything is bright, if it's too large and half or three quarters of the shot is dark, and, and so two works well, and auto is a little bit under strength, I think. Um, so I, what I do is I'll just take like two and then I know whether to go um, two EV bracketing and then I know whether to go up or down and that's pretty straightforward. Works really well. It's live there on the screen and you know two or three shots you get you know the HDR scene you know beautifully. It comes out really nice. Just a matter of adjusting the, um, the center exposure and then getting the spacing right and it works really well. So I'm not going to show you all or even most of the shots, I've just way too many. I'll just show you a couple of examples here of bad and then a couple of good. I don't really have time right now to go into it in detail. Um, and that should do it for right now, um, just to get you an idea. It really does help to have a camera that does HDR when you're out in the middle of the day or even you know twilight or anything like that and you can do blending in the camera, it, it makes a big difference.